Today I'm going to be sharing something with you that's not only going to make you a better rapper, but it's going to make you an outstanding entertainer. So without further ado, let's get it! What's happening everybody? It's your boy Cole Mize from ColeMizeStudios.com coming at you with a brand new installment of Be A Better Rapper Now. Now this thing that I'm talking about today is called the four bar theory. And it doesn't just apply to rapping, it also can be applied to mixing, producing, and songwriting. Now the four bar theory is simple. First off, four bars isn't too long, nor is it too short. And if you can create a payoff for your listeners within every four bars, it's gonna keep them locked in to your song because it's gonna be highly entertaining. Now let's take a quick look at the word entertainment. To entertain means to divert or distract. Well, in order for someone to be distracted, some outside force must get their attention from what they're already focusing on. Basically, in order to be entertaining, you have to not only be able to get someone's attention, but most importantly, you have to be able to keep that person's attention. The four bar theory is all about holding someone's attention. Now, a lot of people have an inherently negative feeling about distractions because it's the evil villain that causes them to be unproductive, which is usually just a lack of discipline with time management. But on the flip side, we love distractions. It's the reason why we like to Netflix and chill after a hard work day. And for example, you could distract someone from killing themselves by giving them a word of encouragement. Or someone could distract you from getting involved with somebody who's doing some shady business and is looking to screw you over. For the record, entertainment and distractions are not inherently bad. Now let's get one more thing straight. If you're a rapper, which you most likely are if you're watching this video, then you are 100% without a doubt an entertainer. Unless your goal is to just make music for yourself to listen to in your own private time, then you most likely want other people to listen to your music. However, people cannot listen to your music unless you can first get their attention, right? Now drawing attention to your music is something we refer to in the music business as marketing and promotion. I can't stress enough how crucial marketing and promotion is. It's a huge topic, there's a lot that goes into it, which I can't get into right now because this video is already gonna be long enough, and plus, it doesn't even matter, yet. You see, getting someone's attention is only part of the equation. If you're not able to hold that person's attention, then it's a lost cause. You only get one chance to make a really big first impression on somebody. And if you apply the four bar theory that I'll be teaching you today, then you'll be a lot more likely to get it right the first time. Now that you understand that entertainment value comes before you start trying to promote your music and build awareness around it, allow me to give you some practical tips on how you can start using this four bar theory today. Now real quick, this is gonna sound kinda messed up, but just follow me for a moment, okay? Your listeners are like a dog, or more like a dog that you're trying to train. You see, dogs are easily distracted, and you have to entice them with some type of incentive, some type of treat to keep their attention. And the same is true when it comes to being a rapper, being an entertainer, being a songwriter. You have to give these listeners treats on a regular basis to keep them enticed and keep them incentivized to continue listening to what you're saying. And how regular do you wanna give them treats? At least every four bars. Now, why the number four? What is so special about the number four? Well, in music, the number four is like a magical number. It's the number of completion. You see, there's four beats within one bar. If there was only three beats in a bar, it would sound incomplete. And a verse is typically 16 bars, which you can think of as four, four bar sections. If it was only 15 bars, the verse would sound incomplete as well. A hook is typically eight bars, which is, once again, two, four bar sections. And if it was only seven bars, guess what? Yeah, it's gonna sound incomplete. And so when you're creating patterns with your cadence, with your rhyme schemes, with your delivery, you want to try to make them four bars in length and then change it as slightly or as drastically as you please for the next four bar section. Again, four bars is like this nice, just perfect measurement. It's not too long and it's not too short. 
But you see, if you make changes to like your delivery, your cadences, your rhyme schemes too quick, then what you're doing is going to come off to the listener as sounding random and it's going to be difficult for them to follow. It's going to sound chaotic. But if you switch things up every four bars, it's going to be long enough for that listener to follow along to. And it's not going to be too long of a pattern to where what you're doing becomes just obvious and boringly predictable. Now that you understand the concept of this four bar theory, how about we take a look at some real life examples of how you can actually apply this to your music. Bring me the beats and I'll clean up the streets If you try and stop me, you'll be peeing your sheets And pleading for peace, ashamed underneath For trying to stop a pit bull dog that's off his leash Okay, now let's check out this four bar pattern right here We'll just call this pattern A Okay, so let me help you understand what you're looking at real quick So everything that you see that is shaded green Those are eighth notes Everything that you see is like a kind of light orange color Those are sixteenth notes and everything that you see is blue is breaths, breathing or pausing. And those are also in accordance with the, uh, their appropriate length. So you'll see, like for an example, at the end of Cadence 2, that's a shorter breath, that's a, a, a 16th note breath. It's a really quick, short breath. And you'll see uh, the end of Cadence 1 and the end of Cadence 4, those are longer breaths. Those are eighth note breaths. So if you're not uh, familiar with uh, music notes and the difference between them uh, make sure that you check out my uh, video lesson on uh, music notes explained it'll break the, all that down for you so essentially when you're rapping all your syllables and stuff break down to different um, musical notes that's why when it comes down to like counting syllables uh, counting syllables can give you a good general idea how much space that you're occupying within a bar but it's not hundred percent accurate because all syllables aren't the same length. All the notes aren't the same length. It's about really um, not just how many syllables you're using, but how long is each syllable? How long is each note um, that you're rapping? Okay. So with that out of the way, um, you're looking at cadences one through four right here. That's what I'm calling it. Cadences one through four, and this makes up a four bar pattern. Okay. So here you'll see on cadence one, this is bar number one. So um, uh, cadence 2, bar 2, cadence 3, bar 3, you get the drill. Okay, so when I say create a 4 bar pattern, it doesn't mean that every bar should be exactly the same because that may be just a little bit too predictable. I prefer to create smaller patterns within each bar that are the same. And I like to refer to these smaller patterns as anchor points. And these are the points that you create which forms a connection from one bar to the other so that they have a strong relationship with one another. And this is what creates the patterns. Now notice how cadence one, beat three, and beat four are using the same combination of notes as cadence two, beat three, and beat four. With the exception of and, which is leading into the next bar. Also take notice of how there's a pattern with the breaths slash pauses, which are blue. These are the anchor points for the cadences, which I also used for cadence three and cadence four as well to connect all four bars together. Now the only exception is cadence four beat three, but because I still have the anchor point on the fourth beat, there's still that strong connection. And now there are also other patterns you can pick up on such as cadence one beat one and cadence three beat one, as well as cadence two beat one and cadence four beat one. Do you notice how these patterns are on the same beat? This is what gives them such a strong connection regardless that there's a bar between them that doesn't match. This is what you call a cadence scheme and it works just like a rhyme scheme except it's with cadences. And speaking of rhyme schemes, did you notice how I'm rhyming on the fourth beat of every bar? This is the anchor point for the rhymes. So not only is there a pattern, an anchor point with the cadences, but with the rhymes as well. Now, from a delivery standpoint, I would also likely say all the rhymes on the fourth beat close to the same tone to create an anchor point with my delivery as well. To create an anchor point with my voice, my vocal tone, my emotions, my energy. Bring me the beats and I'll clean up the streets. If you try and stop me, you'll be peeing your sheets and pleading for peace. Ashamed underneath for trying to stop a pit bull dog that's off his leash. And now that you understand what makes this four bar pattern work, what about the next four bar pattern? Well, 
You can make each four bar pattern unique or you can cycle through them if you wish to create a four bar pattern scheme. Now let me just clarify the differences between what I'm calling a unique pattern and a pattern scheme. It's similar to rhyme schemes. What makes a rhyme scheme a rhyme scheme is there's a pattern that you create that carries on from one bar to the next. And then we will call rhymes that are only within one bar internal rhymes. Okay, but a rhyme scheme, a scheme is something that carries over from one bar to the next. So for an example, if you're rhyming on beat four of bar one and you also rhyme on beat four of bar two, that's a rhyme scheme. Okay, but let's say you rhyme with two different words in the middle of bar one, but you don't rhyme in that same section on bar two, and then that's not a rhyme scheme. That's what you would call a internal rhyme. Okay, so schemes are something that carries over from one bar to the next. All right. It doesn't have to be four bars per se, but it just is it's, it's connecting two bars together. All right. So keep that in mind. So let's look at a unique four bar pattern. So for every four bar section, it introduces a new four bar pattern. OK, so a verse is 16 bars, which is four four bar sections. So in this example, you're seeing that each four bar section has a unique pattern. So we're calling it pattern A, which I just exemplified to you a moment ago. And then just imagine a pattern B, a pattern C, a pattern D, all doing their own unique things, just switching things up, keeping them fresh, shifting things around. For an example, on uh, pattern A, I was showing you how all the rhymes ended on beat number four, right? And it was followed by a pause. Well, if you wanted to switch things up a little bit, maybe for the next four bar pattern, maybe you uh, you no longer take a breath at the end of the bar. Maybe you start taking a breath at the beginning of bars, right? Or maybe uh, you start rhyming on the third beat or the second beat. Um, or maybe you continue to rhyme on the fourth beat and then you also add rhymes on the second or third beat and create some internal rhyme schemes. There's so many different things that you can do to switch things up and keep things interesting. Okay, now let's also look at an example of a four bar pattern scheme. Okay, so in this example, you'll notice that the first and the third four bar section are pattern A, and the second four bar section and the fourth four bar section are pattern B. And this is why I'm calling it a four bar pattern scheme, because we're actually copying what we do on the first four bar section. We're doing that also on the third four bar section, and the same with the second four bar section and the fourth four bar section. So you can think about it like that too. So you don't necessarily have to make every single four bar section unique. You can actually create four bar patterns and then you can, it's almost like you're arranging them in a way with your verses. So that way it's still switching stuff up. If you go from pattern A to pattern B and those are different, then you can also cycle back through and do pattern A again and then pattern B again, because there's something different happening in between each four bar section. Now, apart from switching up, you know, rhyme schemes and cadences and delivery every four bars, it's also important to progress the narrative or the lyrical content every four bars. And the fourth bar of a four bar section is a great place to put punchlines because you have three bars that come before it that can set up that punchline and give it context so that that punchline has maximum impact. The fourth bar is also just a great place to complete a thought because a lot of rappers make the mistake of feeling like they have to complete a full thought within one bar. And one bar is a very short amount of time. Instead of cram, uh, cramming all your thoughts into that one bar, try spreading it out. Give yourself a four bar section to complete a thought. Allow everything to kind of breathe a little bit, get a little bit more relaxed and comfortable. And that way you can actually take more time expressing yourself and really getting a lot more detail with what you're trying to say. Now you can also use the fourth bar to shift the narrative of your song, to push it forward so you have a progression, a building. You're actually going somewhere with what you're actually talking about. So for an example, if you're doing like a storytelling type of song, you could use bar one through three to maybe set up the place that your song is is taking place in you know you could describe you know what year it is or where you're actually at and then on the fourth bar maybe you present some type of problem or you're presenting something that you need to do or something that's happening and then that is shifting and setting up the next four bar section so now that you can elaborate on what you just presented now you can also break the rules on the fourth bar and instead of giving that listener that that treat that they're wanting you can actually hold it back from them. And this creates a, uh, a sense of suspense 
intention. It almost makes the person upset a little bit because they're expecting something and you don't give it to them. And it, in a way, it kind of draws them in even more because now they want it that much more. People want what they can't have. <laughs> For example, on bars one through three, you could be describing uh, something you said to a female that you really like. And then at the end of bar three, you set up bar four like this. You could say, and then she said, right? She said in response, then she said to me, and then you pause on bar four. And then you say, well, I'd rather not say. So doing that, you're setting up bar four, right? Through bars one through three, you're setting up bar four, but then you intentionally don't deliver the very thing you set up, which creates tension, it creates suspense. It makes the, the listener a little aggravated because you didn't give them what they were expecting. And psychologically what happens is it makes them want it that much more because you want what you can't have. And movie and television shows use this all the time. You know, we call them cliffhangers. Um, you know, you're watching the end of a sitcom and then something happens and then boom, they cut it off before there's any type of conclusion or resolve. And this is, this is a legitimate technique to keep people interested in what you're doing. Now there's some more extra benefits to this whole four bar theory. You will likely notice that the music that you're rapping over is also changing every four bars. It may not be super duper drastic, but it's very common for producers to use a similar technique when it comes to audio production. Once again, they're trying to keep the, the listener entertained. If you just have the same loop over and over and over again, then it weighs on your ears very quickly. It gets, you get ear fatigue super fast because it's so predictable. So what you'll notice is a lot of times after a four bar section is up, usually a new instrument is added or something is taken away, or maybe there's a sound effect that you hear at the very end of the four bar section leading into the, the beginning of the next four bar section, you'll notice some type of change a lot of times. It can be subtle, it can be drastic, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but pay attention to that. Also, if you're trying to memorize your song for let's say a live performance, or if you're disciplined enough to memorize your lyrics before you record in the studio, which I do recommend if you can, because it can help with confidence, it can help with delivery. As uh, Forrest Gump said, it's uh, one less thing to worry about. <laughs> uh, but if you wanted to memorize your lyrics, I recommend breaking them down into four bar sections. I always said that uh, if you want to eat an elephant, you have to eat it one piece at a time, right? So trying to memorize a whole song all at once can be too much, but if you break it down into little small bite-sized pieces, four bars, it's a lot easier to memorize a song. I am also a fan of recording verses in four bar sections. This is because instead of you rapping a whole verse over and over and over again, trying to get that perfect take and run the risk of just blowing out your vocals and causing your vocal, your voice to be sore, your throat to be sore, and just um, causing your, the quality of your vocals to become diminished. Instead of doing that, I like to actually focus on recording in four bar sections. That way I can focus on perfecting each four bar section. Now, I'm not speaking from a like ear training point of view or learning my verse. Usually, typically before I record, I, I like to memorize my verses but I break them down into four bar sections so I can actually perfect the vocal delivery because your voice is going to sound slightly different every single time you record. You know, it's just, it's just that unique. So instead of wearing myself out by recording the whole verse over and over again, if there's only a small section that's giving me problems, I'll just focus on that four bar section. And it's a way to keep your voice fresh and make sure that everything is lively. Um, back in the day, I used to pride myself on doing what we called one takes. You know, where I step up to the mic and I record it all the way through the first time. And I remember listening to other rappers, mainstream rappers, and I was like, man, how come their stuff sounds so much smoother and it just sounds so much more perfect and full? And that's when I realized that they're punching in. They're absolutely punching in. So there's nothing wrong with punching in. It's nothing to be ashamed about. Um, because once you record something, that's it. It's a record. It's, it's, it's in the history books. So you want to make sure that it's as perfect as possible. Also, when you're wanting to study other rappers, when you're trying to step up your rap game, instead of listening to a whole song at once and trying to make sense of it, you can start breaking down the song in four bar sections and start studying their cadences, study their rhyme schemes, study the, their delivery, study all that in four bar chunks so it's a lot more 
uh, easily digested. You know, it can be hard to make sense of big pieces of information at one time, but if you break it down to small pieces and then you search for the patterns, it really simplifies the process and it starts, things start to become a lot more um, noticeable. They start becoming more obvious and it, it is not nowhere near as overwhelming. Now listen up, this is called the four bar theory, not the four bar rule, okay? So the next time you're working on one of your songs, feel free to experiment with this theory and see how it works out for you. But at the end of the day, I want you to always do what you think sounds best, okay? You should strive to make the music that you wanna hear. These are just techniques that can help you along in that process. And I'd be curious to know if you've maybe already experimented with some of the techniques that I've shared with you today. Maybe you're doing something slightly different than some of the stuff I shared today that's been working for you. I'd love to hear uh, your feedback on how things are working for you. Or perhaps there's a question that you have about something that I explained uh, today and you just need a little bit of clarity. Um, regardless, drop your comments in the uh, comment section below. And if you're new to my channel, I have a special gift that I would like to give you today. It's my ebook called The Number One Fundamental to Rapping. And it's a book that I wish I would have had when I first started rapping many, many moons ago. And it's gonna take you through all the different elements of rapping. It's very easy to read, it's not too dense. It's gonna give you a nice overview and it's gonna explain to you what the number one fundamental to rapping actually is. And it's gonna also tie into this lesson today. So make sure you check that out and also sign you up to my mailing list, which is where I share all my new content. And that's also where you can uh, send me your questions and uh, get a response. So anyways, this is Cole Mods with ColeModStudios.com with another segment of Be A Better Rapper Now. I hope this is helpful. And remember, when it comes to rapping, there's no rules. There's only techniques. Peace.